after I got the engine to crank with the key, I kind of thought about it and I thought, you know, that's a that's a pretty light episode. So what I did was I went inside and I separated the stock engine harness down into uh, all the circuits. Like this is this is all the ignition coil. Not sure what some of these are, but that's because they weren't on the engine when I was taking the harness apart. So I couldn't see where they went. But we'll figure it out. Also got my micro squirt out here and I got my computer open to the wiki. So I think I'm going to start wiring this thing up. Um, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be able to. I mean, it needs to get done, so no time like the present. So the first circuit I'm going to do is this ignition coils, all the ignition coils. Uh, I decided to use the same circuit that I ran the old, the original wires ran through for the new ECU. So this puts the micro squirt just like behind my uh, glove box which should work pretty good. I've actually got still a lot of wire in there and this is just the harness that comes with it. So it shouldn't be too bad. I should be able to reach most everything without too much, too much jumper wire. Uh, I know if anybody out there is actually like a professional automotive electrician, you're going to cringe at probably everything I'm going to do, but if it runs, it runs. I'm basically planning on redoing everything in this at some point. So we're getting into it now and it's actually coming along a little better than I thought it would. Um, so what I'm finding on this is, so these ignition coils, you have three wires coming out of each one of them. One wire out of every one is going to go to switched power. And one wire out of every one is going to go to a chassis ground. So you only have one wire that has a specific connection that it needs to make to the ECU in each of them. And since I'm running a micro squirt, I have to run it with the wasted spark. So what that means is the number one cylinder and the number six cylinder are going to be hooked on the same output. Number five and number two will be the same output. And three and four will also be the same output. So it's not too bad. And this wiki makes it very easy. You see, it's got uh, where everything needs to go. So I'm following that. Uh, the other system that works like this is the injectors are on a batch fire so i think it's three injectors at a time will be firing uh or three injectors will be on the same circuit so you'll only have two sets of in the computer will only think it's controlling two injectors basically but uh it will be controlling all six of them so just like that we've got our ignition coils wired up uh, I still got to clean this stuff up around here, but I don't want to mount this until I've got everything else planned out. Uh, I ended up just taping all the grounds and the and the switch 12 volts together. Uh, these I might uh, solder into one one big wire to go to the relay panel, uh, and then the grounds I just have to find a place to have them kind of pop out of the pop out of the. Uh, cover and get grounded somewhere so I'll figure that out at some point but I think that looks pretty good at some point in the future I do want to change this to have the LS coils on it so it'll be like the row of coils I think that looks super clean and performance wise I'm sure it's quite a bit better I should probably actually buy some new coils anyways because if you see I have some that say Delphi and some that don't not sure what that's about, but there are probably some cheap coils that somebody put in just to get this thing running at some point. But I think next I'm going to move to the injectors because this is right here and all I'm doing is I'm using that injector harness and I have that connector in this side of the harness. I'm just going to turn that and connect it into my micro square harness. So I found my injector harness and I grabbed it and then I looked at the wiki and this is even easier. 
So, starting on the top, which would be pin A, is your switched 12 volt. So I'll leave this wire its full length and run it to wherever I put the relay panel. The rest of the wires on the top, B, C, and D, are all your injector one output. This one is pin E. It is not used. There is a wire to the female side, but the male side that goes to the injectors, there is no pin. So that's a weird way to do it. I, I don't know why GM would have done it. That uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. But a good rule of thumb, even though this wire is, we don't need it, I never cut a wire off so short that I cannot connect something to it later on. Leave a good inch and a half, I say. Other than that, all the the other three wires on the bottom are all your injector two output. So what I've done, I've pulled injector one and two out of the harness. And I'm just going to try and find a nice, nice angle, a nice smooth curve to, uh, to take these wires and connect them to that so that it's all nice and clean. All right, I've decided that's enough wiring for today. So we're going to do some modifications to my exhaust manifold that I need to make that I kind of didn't think about when I built this. Uh, first, I need a wastegate flange on it somewhere in this general region. And then secondly, something I noticed after I put it on is that the, um, the power steering reservoir is right in front of this. So we're gonna cut in here and turn that flange out just, uh, you know, 15 degrees or so. Maybe not even that much. And uh, yeah, then we'll fill it in. I did have some pieces of pipe left over from when I built this. Uh, probably won't be the prettiest looking, but uh, something that's gonna make running the intake a lot easier. And I would like to keep power steering on that since it isn't really a, just a drag car. It's a, uh, you know, it's a cruiser. So yeah, let's get to it. So I got the manifold cut and I got it bent out to where I think it's going to need to be. Uh, I've been looking at some some pictures that I took. Unfortunately, I didn't take any measurements because that's not how I do things, right? I just wing it. So uh, I basically took it out as far as I can and I think I should still be able to do a, you know, a downpipe. I don't want to get so far that the downpipe's running into that. If that were the case, I probably should have just extended the whole thing out, but I don't think I need to. I think this should be good. Uh, it still might be a little tight on the reservoir for the power steering, but I think I can make this work. So now what I'm going to do is cut some like, pie cuts out of this and try to fill this in. Focus. Try and fill all this in. Um, and then what, then after that I can uh, cut a hole and have a little tube that comes up just a little ways. I gotta make sure I don't block off any of my bolt holes so that I can still fit the bolt through there. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get to cutting and I'm gonna fill this in and then I'll be back.
I got that welded in there. Not the prettiest thing, and I'm starting to get a pretty good uh, curve to my plate there. But this is what it is. I'm zoomed in. All right, there we go. Uh, so now what I need to do is cut a hole in there for. I didn't cut this to shape yet, but so I'll have this that just kind of sits in there. Shorter. Probably down, I'll just have it above the flange. And then I'll have to put that one on. So I'll need enough space for the band to go around that. And I mean, it'll be over a little bit. Try not to lean it, I'm gonna try not to lean it back because uh, I don't think I'll get good flow into it if I do that, but just gonna try to have it straight up. And uh, yeah, try to have it as clean as possible in there, I guess. But I am going to try and cut this hole with possibly the weakest uh, drill press known to man. So we'll see how that goes. This thing usually has trouble drilling through just like regular steel with a drill bit. I can't believe it did that that easy. She's having a good day. So I've got my hole cut out and I made my little uh, clip to go on here. Stick up, doesn't stick up that far. I will have to like heat up and hammer this bottom piece in to close it up. but. Before I do that, I'm going to weld the flange on the top. And I think there is quite a bit of clearance up to the hood in that truck, so I think we'll be just fine. But I'm going to get all this welded together, and uh, then we can take it back home and put it on the truck, see what it looks like. So it's welded all together now, except for the back of the wastegate tube. Uh, I can't get in there with my TIG. I might just buy a little spool of stainless wire and do it with a MIG. Um, but yeah, that should work. Uh, the big test will be if it fits on the truck. And it does fit. So there we go. We've got the turbo on there. It is missing the power steering reservoir. That's good. So I can keep that on. I still need to figure out my lines for the power steering. I just need to figure out how to adapt them, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it should work good. I need to get a wastegate. I don't have one to put on there right now. If you guys have ever bought wastegates, you know, like, good ones are not cheap. So, if I'm going to spend my money on anything, it's going to be a good wastegate so I don't just blow the head off of this thing. But I still need to remove the little fitting for the heater core down there because that's going to be in my way and also get a 90 degree fitting for the oil feed line to the turbo. I'm going to grind that flange down level and uh, we should be pretty good. I'm going to try and get through the electrical a little quicker here. There's not too much more stuff to hook up but if you've done one of these projects you know like you get one thing done and then you got to do 10 more to get to the next step so it's a little bit frustrating but we're getting there and with that new sled I just bought this isn't really a, a huge priority I got too many projects people so yeah if you want to keep up on this hit that subscribe button if you like what I'm doing maybe leave a like Leave a comment, what would you put one of these engines in?
you know, what's your dream engine swap? Let me know down below. I'm always looking for ideas and stuff. But I think that's going to be it for now, guys. I'll see you later.